Santa Barbara and Ventura counties have some of the most prime agricultural land in the world. The central coast of California is one of only five places in the world that has a true Mediterranean climate. And that's one of the primary reasons that the central coast is such an important and irreplaceable supplier to the global food supply. Here on the central coast, we have over 3,500 farms on over 800,000 acres of fertile farmland. These farms grow more than 250 specialty crops, like strawberries, lemons, wine grapes, cauliflower, broccoli. And these farms employ over 50,000 people at the peak of season and generate over $3.8 billion of income to the economy. Ventura County exports to over 80 different countries, including Canada, Japan, and the Republic of Korea, while Santa Barbara County exports to 34 different countries. As growers supporting the world food supply, here are some of our stories and challenges in exporting food to help feed our hungry world. The human population is as large as it ever has been, and we as a population are eating healthier than we ever have, and Ventura County plays a huge role in that. We do export a, a large volume of produce to Canada, Mexico, Taiwan, Japan, and Hong Kong and Singapore. I couldn't quantify it for you, but suffice it to say that an overwhelming majority of the produce that is sourced from Ventura County supplies the global chain. Prior to these big international markets that we have today, you were relegated to what you produce in your area or your district or maybe just your country. Today, you have access to the whole world. International business has always been an interest. Uh, I find it fascinating uh, the logistics of the world, how things get moved around, the supply and demand, uh, what creates them, uh, where they're sourced, and, and how they get from field to field farm to fork, essentially. As a grower, uh, you know, we have many concerns. Uh, the, the primary concern for us is to, to grow the, the best quality product because it has the best outcome. Uh, as a shipper, uh, it's the quality that's going to bring you repeat orders. Uh, it's the one that's going to sustain you. We grow a variety of conventional and organic specialty crops. We grow broccoli, cauliflower, celery, spinach, parsley, red leaf, green leaf, romaine, iceberg, um, strawberries, and Brussels sprouts, and I'm sure there's a few more that I'm missing off the top of my head. <laughs> so we harvest about 15 acres of broccoli a week from March through November, and about 6% of our broccoli acres is exported mostly to Japan. We export more broccoli than any other commodity, and so that, that's our largest export crop. When it leaves the field, it goes to the cooler and it's injected with ice to keep it cool. From there, it's loaded into a semi-truck and then it's sent to the port. Once it hits the port, it goes onto a ship and it's on the water for another 14 to 15 days before it reaches Japan. We'll export to Taiwan, Canada, or Mexico sometimes as well, maybe different commodities. I know in Santa Barbara County itself, on a global scale, in 2019, Santa Barbara County exported to 34 different countries. Canada was the top country and strawberries were the top commodity. Quite often, it's uh, not always about the price. Well, the quality that comes out here is typically a little lighter skinned onion. They're a little milder than some of the uh, harder varieties that may come out of Europe. And, I, and this is what uh, I believe that they're looking for. The faster we get our vegetables from the field to that cooling facility, the longer the shelf life is. It's all about cold chain hours. The second you put a knife to a growing crop and you harvest it, it begins to break down. Each crop has a different shelf life period. Celery, for example, we internally like to think that 21 days after it's been harvested with the knife, it needs to have been consumed. And so it all comes down to cold chain hours, keeping them consistent and getting 
the produce in a high quality form from the field to the shelf as quickly as possible. The markets for celery do differ all over the world. For example, our Japanese counterparts, they really, really like small size celery, almost hearts. Um, in, in Europe, they like a much lighter blanched colored celery that has a higher salt content, and we can provide that. Uh, in the United States, it also varies. Uh, it varies not just by size and color, but it also varies uh, by conventional and organic. Well, currently, the, the, there is no one real biggest buyer. The, it, you could break it down more to um, uh, different districts. Central America is, is currently probably our largest opportunity. Uh, our largest competitor in that region is Europe. Uh, so uh, we compete very well on a world stage uh, with Europe. The, our proximity to market, our, our logistics, our, our, you know, the transportation availabilities. It's important to know your commodity, to be able to ferret out uh, what you can do with it. Just because you have it doesn't mean you can export it. It's, it's very wise to understand and know that commodity, to know if it will travel. Um, you don't want to sell someone a problem if you have a commodity here that looks good, but it won't arrive uh, in Central America or in Asia two weeks later. Um, it's better to not ship it. Export products typically offer a higher premium per box, so we have the opportunity to make more money. But more goes into the pack too, because they have a higher quality standard and we have to have a better pack to survive the trip, a little more goes into it as well, but if the premium's that much higher, we still have the potential to make more money. Well, typically it's a question of supply and demand. Uh, and there's a demand and we try to fill that with the supply. We're not just competing with each other on a domestic stage. Uh, we are competing uh, globally. It, there's a bigger purpose to what I do. Um, it's not just working out here with the guys and you know, it's cultivating trust within the team and there is no fresher or safer food in the world as far as I'm concerned than what you're gonna get from the United States and we, we get to be a part of that. There's a lot of opportunity here. The proximity to uh, the ports, the proximity to uh, the large metropolitan area, Los Angeles, uh, make it, I think, ideal.